My name is Cindy Hellyer Hines. I'm an artist and educator. I draw primarily, and I've been drawing all my life. I'm influenced by nature and the world that's around me, and also by time. Time, the element of time, and how it impresses itself, not only on simple elements like organic fruits and vegetables, but also the way it etches itself in the human body. My current body of work deals with aging women. I use my mother almost exclusively as a model. And through this, I'm expressing the power and wisdom of aging, but also what the experience of time does on the face. The human figure is integrated into the landscape and speaks of the cycle of the earth and time. So the drawings that I'm doing become somewhat lessons, not preachy and righteous, but lessons of increasing awareness. As I watch the vegetables and the fruit on my drawing board ripen and start to deconstruct, decompose, I'm continuously reminded of the cycles of the earth and life. It's always being reborn, always being relived. It's always creating a memory for us. My hope with these drawings is they are points and departures for creating a dialogue with the viewer so that when the viewer looks at them, it brings more questions than answers. It puts the viewer in a point where the viewer goes, what is this about? Why is this here? Why are we here? And it also has many aha moments of awareness where the viewer looks at it and goes, I never saw that before. That light, that luminosity, that beauty. What I'm going to show you today is a demonstration of how to construct a finished drawing using Prismacolor colored pencils. Because the process can be very long, what I've prepared are three different stages to expedite the experience in watching this. For me, I prefer drawing from observation. I like to work with objects that change, like fruits and vegetables. But because of that, I have some photographs so that I have reference to go back to. To begin a drawing process, what I would do is start with some preliminary drawings. I'm working on tracing paper. The reason why I'm working on tracing paper is because if I actually nail something and I really like it, but other parts aren't working really well, I can come back in and make corrections and trace over it. What I'm doing is looking at my subject matter. I'm deciding on scale with this. I'm working really, really loose so that I can actually really work out my composition in the amount of space that I have available. I'm using scribble line to build. I'm not worrying about gesture. I'm actually not worrying about anything but the relationship between object to object, laying it out. Once I get my composition down, I will put a picture plane in it, framing it in. So I go, here is my composition. What I then do is I will turn this over. On the opposite side, I'm gonna use a new pastel and very gently rub new pastel, which is a soft chalk pastel, over the line drawing, which I can see through the tracing paper. I am really looking to just kind of get my scale down because I will be very honest with you, when I work, I work to the size of the paper. And so I really need just a bit of containment when I start to lay this out. Using a different color than the one that I began with, I'm gonna retrace my steps. This will transfer a line drawing on to the paper that I'm going to be using for the finished drawing. I can also easily make corrections because I'm drawing very lightly. I will lift this off and I have 
a tracing on the paper. Let me talk a little bit about the kind of paper I'm using. This is a black arch cover stock. This kind of paper really lends itself to working with colored pencil because it allows you, because there's so much fiber in this paper, to literally emboss and embed the mark. Right now, I can see my drawing. I'm just gonna beef it up a little bit so I can see some of the lines that got lost as I was lifting up the tracing paper. Now, I begin using a Verithin. The Verithin is a harder Prismacolor pencil, and I find it is really effective to lay my first layer of value, which we call a grise. Now, what I'm building is a line network. One thing that's really important, you can see that I am left-handed. As a left-handed person, I find it's really helpful to start on the right side of the picture plane and work from right to left. I also find it's really helpful to put something underneath my hand so that I'm not smudging. For today, though, I'm not going to use that so that you can actually see more of what I'm doing. Now, I'm trying to keep my eye as much as possible on what I'm drawing. And what I'm doing is using both directional line. This is a line that repeats the edge of the object being drawn and a cross contour. And so I'm building up my line network or my grise using a white verithin. Also notice that as I'm drawing, I'm continuously rotating the colored pencil. And what it does is it wears down the colored pencil in more of an even way than if you held it in the same direction. What I'm doing is working in a quarter tone here, but I will actually achieve levels of light and value that run all the way from the blackest, richest darks to the lightest, lightest whites. Things that are locally white, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make those quite white. And then I'm gonna work my other colors into it. I like to work with what we call arbitrary color first. Arbitrary color means that I'm building layers over my value. The colors are not actually the colors that you see, that you perceive, so I'm not working with perceptual color as much as I am building layers of underneath color. Working that whole picture plane, note that I'm not staying in one area. I'm not really concerned with fine transitions of value at this time. I'm just trying to block out my lights and darks. As I'm building, you can see I'm getting more of the quarter tones, moving into the half tones, and leaving the black of the paper as your dark darks. What I find is giving it a numerical value sometimes really, really helps. So when I talk about a level one value, I'm talking about the hot spots or the highlights. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adding my number one value or my hot spots, and I'm really punching it out. I'm embedding the Prismacolor colored pencil into the paper. So I'm almost embossing. As we see in this pair, the reflection of this pair is, is just hot, but it's not white. It's actually gold and yellows and greens and oranges. But I'm gonna put the white ground because the intensity of that color is quite bright. Got some highlights and hotspots in here. Now I'm gonna move from using the white into going into a very thin gold. The reason why is because if I were just gonna go in with local color right now, it would be dull, flat, 